Hey, what's up, guys? So, welcome to the uh, Clapped Out Suvies and Hoopties YouTube channel. Um, I get questions all the time about lifting cross tracks. I see people asking on the forums all the time, and I've realized that a lot of cross track owners are a little bit newer to the brand and maybe aren't super familiar with all the companies out there that offer products for Subarus and for taking them off road. So this is gonna be just like a really basic video. Um, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a professional, so keep that in mind if you decide to take anything that I say um, and use it, just know that it's just my opinion. None of this is professional advice and shouldn't be considered as such. Uh, but with that being said, I just kinda wanted to go over some of the real basic things and give you guys maybe a starting point but if you want to read more about this and you want links to all of the different stuff that i'm you know talking about uh, i wrote an article for liftedimports.com you can go over there and check that out if you're the type of person that likes to read i've got links in there to where you can go and buy a lot of this stuff and there's a bunch of other helpful articles on that site like you know what are the best tires what's the biggest tire you can run on your cross track you know what are some good accessories you can just find a lot of good info they've also got a lot of uh, articles where people showcase their builds and kind of explain hey these are the parts i use this is how much lift i've got these are the tires i'm running so if you want to see kind of what some of these uh lift kits look like and what people have done with their cross tracks that's actually my favorite thing about the site is you can kind of check that stuff out on there and see what other people are doing. I just am gonna start off by kind of telling you some of the uh, most popular ways to lift uh, your Subaru. There's a few different uh, like styles of lift kits that you can um, choose to install. The first one is gonna be aftermarket springs. So you know a lot of people buy lowering springs for their cars for track purposes and things like that. But if you wanna lift your vehicle, there are some companies that make springs that have, um, you know, that are, that will just give your car some extra clearance. They're also going to be a little bit stiffer. Now, the downside to these is that you're going to have to disassemble your strut assembly to install them, put everything back together, and put it in the car. Um, that's not really a big problem, but it's a little bit extra work, and you're going to have to get a spring compressor if you want to install something like that. The plus side to this is if you're raising your car, your center of gravity is gonna be a little bit different. So um, a little bit stiffer spring kind of helps offset the extra height and um, compensates for that higher center of gravity. So it's gonna handle a little bit better, you know, kind of maybe cut down on some body roll. Now the downside to that is when you get out on the trail, since it's a little bit stiffer, it's gonna maybe feel a little bit more bumpy. Um, but people don't seem to have too much of a problem with it. There's King Springs and um, Rally Tech makes some springs as well. But um, a lot of people choose to install them because since they're stiffer, they'll, they'll purchase them and put them at least in the rear if they are going to be loading up the car with a bunch of camping equipment or recovery gear, hiking equipment, photography equipment, or if you've got a bunch of kids and you guys just have a lot of luggage that you haul around camping or traveling or whatever kind of helps offset like butt sag subarus are already infamous for that so that's the first way to lift a subaru the second way which is the most common is getting a strut top spacer and these just go on top of your uh, mounts that go in between like the strut and the body of the vehicle you essentially install them on top of the strut, bolt everything together, and it just kind of pushes your body up a little bit further and gives you your lift. The plus side of this is a real easy to install and then uninstall. So let's say you just leased your cross track and you're thinking like, okay, I'm wanting to get a little bit of extra ground clearance so that I can go do some hiking trails or you know get to the mountain a little bit easier. You know, you're maybe not trying to beat the dog piss out of a brand new car that you've leased. This is a great option because you can drive it for three years and then when you decide, hey, I'm done with this car, 
I'm going to trade it in for something else. If you're mechanically inclined, you can uninstall that stuff right in your driveway pretty quickly, or you can just leave them on, whatever you want to do. The plus side to this is there's a lot of different options. You can get anywhere from like a half inch, probably up to, you know, two and three eighths inch spacers. And uh, again, the install is a really big pro to these. It's a nice feature. They're just pretty quick to install. Don't take a bunch of, you know, rocket science or special tools. Uh, the downside is even though you've lifted your car, your spring rate is exactly the same. They're affordable. There's a ton of them out there. You're not going to have a hard time getting them. Probably won't have a hard time installing them. Um, but again, you're going to have um, the issue of maybe having butt sag if you load your car up heavily with a bunch of gear. Now, here's the deal. If you buy a strut spacer kit, which I can almost guarantee that that's what you're going to end up with because it's the most common. They're the most readily available. It's pretty much what everybody uses. I know that's not common in like the 4x4 world, but with Subarus, that's just kind of been the best way to lift these things. Um, but if you avoid eBay kits or just cheapo, you know, junk kits, you'll probably end up with something. Um, if you go through somebody like uh, Primitive Racing or Anderson Design and Fabrication, Subi Lift Oz, you know, just some of the major players, LP Aventure, they're going to have kits um, most likely where you can get an option to have the rear just a little bit higher, maybe by 3 eighths to a half inch. That way you don't end up with a saggy butt when you put all your uh, gear into the car when you go camping. Now, you can actually get a combination of the two. You can get strut spacers and lift springs installed at once. Uh, Primitive Racing offers this. A lot of their kits come with just like a real, like a mild spacer, maybe like an inch, and then an inch worth of uh, lift spring. So you get your improved spring rate, a little better handling, and you get the additional lift with your uh, spacer. So that's a really good option that a lot of people do, but... Most people aren't really willing to spend the extra money because springs can cost probably about 450 bucks for a good all four set of uh, king springs. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's a good option, but is a little bit spendy. Now, the third way that people will lift their cars, or at least their Subarus anyways, and a lot of other vehicles, is long travel coilovers. Now... Long travel coilovers are great, but um, they cost a lot of money. <laughs> they're cool because they're fully adjustable. A lot of times you can adjust all the way up to five inches or something like that. In different ride height, you get a lot more suspension travel. When you're off-road, that's like a, a game changer. If your suspension can, like if your wheels can travel down further and contact the ground, that's where a lot of your capability comes from. So up until recently, I would not have even mentioned long travel coilovers for Subarus just because nobody made any that were even remotely affordable. The only options you had were some rally spec stuff that was going to be anywhere from three to $10,000. And the average person that's just trying to go uh, take their cross track off, you know, on some forest roads, you probably don't want to have eight grand wrapped up in a set of uh, coilovers. <laughs> Recently, there have been a lot of um, smaller companies that have brought some Subaru coilovers to the market that are good, that don't cost an arm and a leg. And from what I've been seeing, the flat out suspension GR lights, those are pretty solid. And I would highly recommend looking at them if you want to go that route because they seem to be pretty affordable i think you can get most of their coilovers for most subarus for under 2500 bucks i don't know the exact price but i would look into that if you do want a long travel suspension i'm just going to give you just a quick rundown of some of my favorite brands and this is going to be in no particular order i don't really give a fudge what you buy this is to just kind of let the you know new subaru driver who's not real familiar with what's out there to just kind of give you a starting point, realize like, okay, these are the, some of the brands that are out here and 
maybe I need to start looking into these and see which one fits my purposes best. So the first one that I would bring up would be Primitive Racing. I've been using um, their skid plates since I kind of got into this stuff over seven or eight years ago. Actually, I don't even know. It's been a long time since I've started wrecking Subarus on trails, but um, yeah, their skid plates are fantastic. That's That was my introduction to them. I started using their skid plates. They're really heavy into the rally game. That's how they got started was making rally parts. Um, I would say that one of the things I like about them a lot is they're just a, a, a solid group of people. It's a small company. They do not sell stuff that I would ever consider to be like garbage. You know, they don't sell cheapo parts. When you go and you look at their prices online, just keep in mind that this is not junk. You know, these are good parts that they're gonna last, you know, the lifetime of the vehicle, depending on how you drive it, obviously. But a lot of their kits incorporate um, upgraded springs and some uh, lift spacers. All of their kits are gonna come with everything that you need. A lot of companies will just sell you the spacers and be like, oh, look, here's your lift kit. When in reality, they don't sell you all the other parts that you need to make everything function right. Because when you lift, you gotta space your brake lines. You gotta space um, your subframe a little bit. You gotta just install some other things that you're really gonna wanna make sure you have on point. So Primitive Racing, Love those guys. They're actually based in Oregon. That's where I grew up. And uh, the owner is an actual rally driver. So <laughs> I would take a look at them and kind of see what they have available. They're going to have kits for first and second gen cross tracks and for some of the newer stuff that's coming out, like, you know, the cross track sport that's out now. Um, and they're just always on top of their game. The next kit that I would suggest looking at would be um, LP Aventure. I don't speak French, so sorry about the accent, but they're a Canadian company. If you want a spacer kit, it's just spacers with no springs. They make an awesome kit. It's gonna come with, uh, I think, extended exhaust hangers. You're gonna get your subframe spacers. You're gonna get everything that you need. If you buy their kit and you take it into your you know, mechanic of choice and say, here's my kit, install this, he's gonna have what he needs to do it. It's gonna come with all the right hardware, all the replacement bolts that you're going to need. And their kits are solid and they have two options. They sell them with bare metal and then they sell them powder coated. If you want to save a few bucks, you can buy the bare metal kit and paint it yourself. That's usually an okay option. Just make sure you do a good job so that you don't have to, you know, fight rust or anything like that. You can also buy their powder coated option if you don't want to worry about it. The next kit that I would, um, maybe recommend looking at would be just the ready lift kits um i have mixed feelings about these kits but i think i think they're okay for the average person that's just trying to you know get a little extra clearance to drive some forest roads um i would like to let you know though that every person that i know that's ever purchased these has not gotten subframe spacers with it and that's okay, but you just need to know that before you buy this kit, you're, you're gonna wanna purchase uh, subframe spacers or you may see them called, uh, what, do they, what do they call it? Multi-link spacers is what they call it on cross tracks. But what that does, it, it's gonna recenter your rear wheels in the wheel well so that they're not all pushed towards the front after you lift the car. So when you take it to the alignment shop, they're gonna be like, what's wrong with your car? <laughs> Uh, so keep that in mind. Just remember, you're going to want to get those subframe spacers. Some of their photos look like they come with them. But again, nobody that I've ever talked to that's bought it has gotten those with it. They're a great deal if you just want, you know, a cheap lift kit that's going to kind of get the job done. They also have the camber correction built into them, I believe, so that your car can be aligned properly. One other thing that I'm not a huge fan of is I believe that those kits have a lower rear spacer. The rear spacer doesn't come up as high and that's the opposite of what you want in my opinion. So just keep that in mind if you buy them, you know, they work great, but those are just a couple things that uh, I would keep in mind. Another kit that a lot of people look at, which 
it's maybe not a bad idea. It's not the worst lift kit ever. Um, if you're going to try to, like, let's say you're shopping for one of those eBay kits and you're tempted to buy that. If that's kind of where your budget is at, I would say that instead of doing that, the rough country lift kit's probably your best option. Uh, it comes with brake line spacers. It's going to come with extra hardware. Um, and I believe it's a two inch lift kit, but it doesn't come with the subframe spacers. As far as I know, I, again, I've never talked to anybody that's had it show up with the subframe spacers. So if you buy this kit, keep that in mind. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is it's a decent kit for somebody that's really just on a budget and is not trying to push the car very hard. Um, I've used rough country products on other vehicles. Like I own a Jeep. I know a lot of people that own Jeeps and those of us that actually, you know, kind of beat on our cars. I've heard reports and I've, I've experienced this myself of some of their parts, uh, failing when put up to, you know, wheeling abuse. So just keep that in mind that it's probably the best option if you're not really going to be hammering on the car too hard. Um, but that's just something to be aware of and, you know, just take, take that information and do with it what you want. I don't have any problem with the company at all that I, like I said, I've used their products. It's just something to be aware of. They make a budget based product and you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, the next lift kit that you might want to look at is going to be Anderson design and fabrication. They make a lot of good stuff. They are based in Oregon, which a lot of the Subaru aftermarket stuff is based there because we got a bunch of uh, hippies out here that love Subarus. Oh, I love tasty beverages. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I have used ADF lift kits on multiple Subarus that I've owned. I would say that if you're going to go the strut spacer route, and you want to buy something made here in the USA, ADF is probably the way to go. The other reason that I really like them is if you aren't 100% sure what you need, give them a call. Um, every time I've called, Patrick picks up the phone. He's the owner. I've asked him questions, and he's kind of pointed me in the right direction and given me some technical advice. So if you're not 100% sure what you want, or if you want something maybe custom, or you just need advice on what you should be buying specifically for your purposes, Anderson Design is a great option. Um, the other thing I really like is they've got options for, you know, really small lift kits if you just need a little bit of extra lift. And then they've got options that go up to like two inches with like the two and a half inch option in the rear, I believe. So if you want to eliminate that butt sag in the rear, if you've got a heavy rooftop tent or you got a spare tire carrier or something like that they've got some pretty good lift kit options and they're pretty customizable but again they're a small business i like supporting that and uh give them a call and they'll probably be able to you know point you in the right direction so that you feel real confident with what you're purchasing uh another brand that you may want to look at that's got options for a lot of different cars a lot of different subarus it's going to be subtle solutions i know some people that uh, have lifted their cars using their stuff they typically um if i remember correctly they don't sell too much in the way of um really thick or you know tall lift kits or tall spacers um i think a lot of what they sell is like one inch just, you know, HDPE or aluminum spacer kits. And if you just need something real subtle, uh, get it, see what I did there? <laughs> uh, subtle Solutions is a, uh, a good option. Finally, I would like to mention those, uh, I, I talked about them a little bit ago, but the flat out suspension um, coilovers. If you want uh, something that's gonna give you a little extra suspension travel, it's not going to really kill you at the bank. Um, those GR lights are really good for the money. I've been seeing people put them on their cars, not really having any issues, make them for a wide range of Subarus. 
and uh, they have a lot of customizable options like different spring rates and things like that that you can order. Um, and that's another company that you can call or email and say, hey, I don't really know what I should buy. Can you help me? And they'll kind of walk you through it. Um, they are a small business, so they're um, probably going to have significant lead times currently. And uh, just be aware of that. But I really do appreciate that they're willing to bring such a, uh, you know, fantastic product to such a niche market. I really appreciate that about them. And, um, you know, I, I think it's cool that they're doing that and they're not, they're not scalping people. They're good products and they're really affordable. Most people could afford these. Um, and you know, I, I don't want to say that it's, you know, the right way to go for everybody. Now I will say that if you are driving a car that's maybe got over 100,000 miles on it and has never had the struts replaced or if you know that your struts are going bad and you are already planning on probably replacing the suspension when you do your lift kit this is probably the best option for you because if you've already got to replace your struts um, you're going to need to pull that stuff out and replace it anyways why not get something that's going to give you your lift and replace your suspension at the same time. Um, just something to keep in mind. And it's not gonna save you money necessarily, but it's not gonna cost you a whole lot more than if you were to buy a lift kit and struts and install all of that. I would look at those if you like the finer things in life and you know, see what, uh, see what you think. There's a few other great brands out there, you know, Subi Lift Oz, like I mentioned, uh, Raceland makes some kits. I've, I've never used those and I haven't talked to a lot of people that have used them, but it's, it's another option out there. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch that I'm forgetting. Those are just some great starting points. You can kind of look around and see what you want to do. I would highly advise you not to buy a cheap eBay kit and the reason why is they don't have any correction for the, like, essentially when you lift the car, it's gonna throw off the suspension geometry. Those kits, they're usually just 100% flat. To the untrained eye, it's like, oh, no biggie. But you're gonna have a hard time getting it aligned. The hardware that it comes with is not that great, and they never come with subframe spacers. So you might save 150 bucks, 200 bucks, but after you replace the hardware that's really chintzy and prone to breaking, um, and then after you buy your subframe spacers, you're not that far off from something that's actually built right, that's actually fabricated well, and designed properly to keep your suspension you know, within factory spec. Um, I know it's tempting, but I just, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, I've driven on a car that had just a cheap no-name kit on it, and that was the issue I had. I could not get it aligned, even with camber bolts. I just couldn't, like the shop just had no luck getting it uh, within spec. <laughs> and it didn't really handle quite as well. And it rusted. That's another thing to keep in mind. It rusted and I caught it in time, but if I hadn't, could have contributed to rusting out my the body of the car. I'd have been pretty upset about that. <laughs> Save 200 bucks now and, and spend an extra however much later whatever you want to do but that's my take on that stuff the other thing is customer service a lot of these brands that are sold online they're sold out of you know russia or china or somewhere like that nothing against any of those places but i prefer to do business in the country that i live in not just because i want to support other people in my community but because your customer service is just going to be better like you order it, takes a month to get here, shows up, you go to install it, and they send you the wrong part, or it's defective or something like that. Now, you gotta get in touch with them in a different time zone. Maybe they don't speak English, good luck, you know? Um, and that's just assuming that you have already bought from them. If you're not sure what you need, getting a hold of somebody that's gonna be able to kinda give you some real 
insight and give you some good, you know, pre-buying advice. It's just not really a thing. And uh, a lot of these other brands, they're going to be able to get on the phone with you, hear what you're saying to them as far as what you need, and then give you some good information on what you should buy. Um, so yeah, I would avoid, I would avoid doing that. Yeah, you're going to save a little bit of money, but it's way better in my opinion to get something that you know is going to be right. And that if on the off chance it's not, you're going to get the customer service that you deserve after you spent money with them. These companies that make legitimate lift kits, they're the ones who did all the research and development that, um, has allowed us to lift these cars properly that these other knockoffs ripped off. So for me, I want to support the people that actually took the risk and invested the time and money to make these kits. Uh, they're owned by really good people and I'm always down to support them. Even if it means I got to pay an extra 150 to 300 bucks, I don't care. I'm going to do that all day long, especially knowing that my products are going to be good. <laughs> Now, another question that I see people asking all the time is what's the biggest lift kit I can get? A lot of people want a three inch or a four inch or a five inch lift kit. It's not that simple. Two to two and a half inches is usually where I would recommend um, sticking. If you go above that, your CV axles are gonna literally be maxed out. They're gonna be past the point where they can operate without just destroying the joint inside there. Now you can fix that by spacing everything back down to where you're still only really gaining the two inches originally, but your body is just up a lot higher. You can do that if you want, but in my opinion, there's not a ton of benefit and it creates a lot more work. You gotta extend your steering shaft. You gotta space out your, uh, you need a new radiator hose. <laughs> you're gonna need all sorts of things that you would have never even thought of. And you're really not increasing your ground clearance at all. And not to mention that there's really nobody right now that offers an out-of-the-box kit to do that. So you'd have to have somebody build you something custom. And there's people I'm sure that would do that, but it's going to cost you some money for really not a lot of benefit. I've had no issue running two-inch lift kits on my Subaru and making them do exactly what I want. So that's the deal with that. If you want a bigger lift kit, that's all I got to say about it. Also, a question that you might have is, how much is it going to cost me to get this installed? And I actually called around... To different uh, places in the US just in some different communities and different areas because the prices are gonna vary like crazy but I got an average uh, number all said and done after I called a bunch of different places I don't even remember I probably called 20 or 30 different shops the average that I found was about 566 bucks it's gonna be obviously way more if you live in San Francisco Versus if you live in some place in Alabama or Arizona, the cost of living is just higher and the cost of labor just is way higher. So keep that in mind. But yeah, 566 bucks is what I found after I called a bunch of people and asked what they would charge me to do an install. Now that's obviously going to vary if you're going to do a lift kit that requires replacing your springs. Uh, that's going to cost you more because I got to disassemble your stuff and put it all back together. So yeah, that's kind of just a real basic rundown. And yeah, I'm just trying to kind of put you on the right path. I would definitely call and talk to your mechanic before you make any decisions. Um, and, you know, do, do a little bit of extra research to see what's going to work best for you. Call some of the companies that I talked about and see how they you know, interact with you on the phone. If you can get them on the phone, uh, if you can't get them on the phone, that's not really a good sign. And if they seem helpful and want to take care of you, if you do get a hold of them, that's a really good sign that if you have a problem, they're going to be more likely to help you than maybe the last guy. But other than that, I don't really, you don't have any other pressing advice. You know, when you get out there and start shopping, just try to get something that's good quality. And, uh, you know, try to take it out and have fun. <laughs> if uh, this is helpful for you, you know, hit the hit the little like button, a little thumbs up. And, you know, sometimes on this channel, I post some hood rat stuff that we do, like smash around on trails. If you want to see more of that, you can subscribe. You don't have to, but why not? 
Don't forget, every single day, tasty beverages only. <laughs>